and they were like, yo, we've heard your song, it's all over radios in the clubs, we want to get you in. And for me, that was like a dream because when I was younger, those are the things we used to look out for. It's like, yo, when a label calls you, it means you're doing good. So, bro, I, I promise you, most labels in the UK were interested in that track. So we had meetings with all of them. We sat down with all of them. Do you know, I remember I was actually watching some of the old stuff we did with the Afrobeats and Conversation. Yeah. And I remember when Eddie was interviewing you and mm -hmm. you talked about your family, yeah. how everyone in your family is musical, mm -hmm. everyone sings. Mm -hmm. I think you even said you play the keys. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, fam, do you know what's also mad that I think some people don't realise about you? Yeah. But like your own YouTube channel has over like 200,000 yeah, subscribers, bro. Crazy, bro. But I feel like you're someone that never really let people know Bruv, you've got, you got accolades. I, 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 don't, I don't know. You see what it is, yeah? See, my dad never taught. Like, we don't know. To, I don't have to brag, bro. And I don't know how to do that. I feel weird if I'm to go and say, like, yo, look what I've done. And this is what I've done. I'm just, I don't like that, bro. So I just, I just pray that everybody finds that out by themselves when they, they research me and stuff. But I just don't. I don't do that, man. So I remember when um, Dance With Me came out, right? Yeah. And I, I'm going to be honest, right? Yeah. I feel when you look at it traje on a trajectory level, yeah. I feel Dance For Me yeah. easy took that record and went further with it. Yep. How did that happen if it's your record? Um, so at the time, I, had, I was just like making proper songs, like Afrobeat songs and stuff. Um, so I didn't really have that much of a catalogue. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't say we got lucky because we did the, the body song first um, and that got quite decent traction. So that one was building up and bubbling and I did not think in my head at any point that we were going to have a single or I was going to have a single that was going to be as big as Dance For Me. So I wasn't prepared, bro. Like I didn't, I got a Ghanaian passport for people that don't know. So obviously I'm, I'm, I'm indefinite here, but so I needed to get visas and stuff to travel and do like touring and stuff. I was not prepared for anything. So when the song started picking up, they were trying to book me, they tried to get me to different places and couldn't go to any of it. But Easy was able to he was very on point and he's very smart, very business minded. So he is, that's something I learned. I actually learned a lot from him during that process. You know, how you're supposed to work a track and, you know, how you're supposed to yeah, get, get things out there. So I, I just lacked. I'll be honest with you. I just wasn't prepared, bro. But now hearing that, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't have a song ready for after that. That's how bad it was. There was not a song recorded that was like, oh, after we've dropped this song, I'm going to drop this next. I wasn't even thinking like that. Was that because the, the single bag was that good, bruv, that you just... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just... Bro, you, know, you know, when you get a first, like, your first hit single, bro, it's gas is like, so you don't... You're just new, in the cloud. Every, yeah, everyone. you're in the cloud, bro. So where you... Like, everyone's calling like, rock and hear your song on radio, this, 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 that. So you're not even concentrating on the most important things. It's like you're basking in the glory of everything that's going on. So I didn't think like that. It wasn't until I think about six months after the track dropped to like nine months, mm -hmm. I realised, whoa, like this song ain't going to last forever. So how am I going to back this up? And by that time, I, I wouldn't say it was too late, but I kind of lost a bit of the hype that I had around the song. So it's, I had to dig myself back up, man. So when you, right, so for those who don't know, yep. what was the process of it getting signed? So like, at what point was their interest from like, the labels? Um, so what we actually did is we dropped us the audio and then we did a challenge the dance with me challenge and at that time challenges weren't really big i think we we're probably one of the first people to do challenges and we had a few big instagram pages posted my brothers did a quick video you know big up my brothers mm -hmm. a quick tease video for the gallon the yeah, gallon course, went crazy course, for the video of course so it was going around and everyone was like raw this song's crazy so i think within about a week two weeks bro i think we hit a million on the audio on youtube no promo we didn't put no money into it Mm. and it was getting bigger and bigger the spotify streams was getting bigger um and it just got to a point where everything was going viral the shazam charts was going like it was going up the shazam charts um everything was just popping on this on the, on the scale that it was popping up on the labels radar so they started contacting us and they were like yo we've heard your song it's all over radios in the clubs we want to get you in and for me that was like a dream because when i was younger those are the things we used to look out for is like yo when a label calls mm -hmm. you it means you're doing good so bro I, I promise you most labels in the uk were interested in that track so we had meetings with all of them we sat down with all of them and in the end we we found who we thought was right for it so like this i was like to know bro yeah when you're having these label meetings, yeah. like, how do they, because it's like they all say the same thing, innit? Yeah. So, Different swag. So, yeah, so let's, yeah. let's almost role play. So, yeah. here at X label wants yeah. to speak to you. Yeah. 
you go there, probably yeah. make sure, you know, yeah. trim everything, <laughs> maybe Shop. put a little sparkly. Yeah, yeah. You sit in. How does the meeting go, bro? Uh, yeah, so firstly, we want to thank you very much for coming in to meet us with, with us today. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, your song is doing amazing right now. Um, we're hearing it all over the clubs and all over this and that. So, you know, we'd like to know what, you know, what you've got going on, what you've got coming up and... You know, if there's a way we can help amplify or magnify what this is how they talk, magnify yeah, yeah. what you're doing, we'll be more than happy to help. And you know, what, what what kind of thing would you be looking for if you were able to get a deal? And that's how they put it to you. So it's like, welcome to our ground and tell us what you want, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and they, I mean, they're all nice people. A lot of them, I know them from outside mm -hmm. of that anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, like Twin B from Atlantic, he supported me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this, but Twin B has supported me since I was probably about 18, 19. Sweet, uh, yeah, and I'm 30 years old now. Mm. So since back then, he's been supporting me. So going to see someone like him was a no-brainer. And also a Twin at Island as well. Um, and Colin, who was at Island, and Joe from Black Butter. There's loads of people that we had met outside. Mm -hmm. So it was nice for me to sit down, sit down with them four million and hear what you know they could try and do for me. But bro, it was crazy, man. That shit was like a dream, man. Yeah, it sounds it, man. And, yeah. But then again, it's like, no one probably knew what that record could have done at no. that time. Even the I don't think even the labels could. Because at that time, I wouldn't, like, Afro songs weren't... But no, bro, you know, that kicked it off. Bro, that's what I'm saying. That, that, so it has to be nobody knew how to handle it. Even we didn't know what to do, bro. So it was a learning curve. Yeah, because I, when I look at it, yeah, and, and you know, people use terminology Afro swing, whatever, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that song had an impact that I hadn't felt since the band, yeah, Oliver Twist, bro, bro. because it touched the young Different audience markets. and then everyone out now the uni crowd was in it do you know how i knew it was gone my little cousins that do not like they're not interested in they used to call me to gas like yo this is my cousin they'll call me like you i'm with the, he doesn't believe you're my cousin and i was like whoa so if it's reached my little cousin's playgrounds and that mm. the song must be gone i was here if a song i've always heard if a song hits the playground the school's playground mm -hmm. you've done something right yeah. so yeah man so when that so that that song happens yeah What's the first thing that starts to starts changing in your life? <laughs> Start getting money, bro. Mm. I think that's one of the things like shows, you can go and do shows and you get decent money from it. Things that change is a lot more people pay attention. When you get a hit single, everybody takes you serious. Do you get what I mean? Because everybody thinks, oh, you've got the formula, you've got this. Mm. So they take you more serious. Um, and even to yourself, I think when you get a single like that, it makes you want to work more harder because you've seen what you can achieve. So it turns, it turns your drive up by like 10, man. So. Bro, you stay on the road. Like, I mean, I see you, you, your international <laughs> PA booking. Bro, you, you're yeah. about, bro. I love it. I love you it. Get me? I love Have it. Have you ever done a show in Ghana? Yeah, I've done, even just this January went, Fuse had the Tina Festival. Oh, yeah, the Tina Festival. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I was there at that. Then um, when Easy did his first Life, in the Easy, Life is Easy concert, I was at that one. I did my own show l two years ago it's a small one i did that about two years ago as well so yeah i've done i've done like three four shows there man Bro, see, see, <laughs> see this is you see i'm working behind closed doors i'm working i might not be putting it out on like for people to see mm. but i'm working i've sold all my seeds man mm. yeah man and i don't like flying Bro, I don't like flying. I don't like flying, so I have to like drink every time I get on a plane. <laughs> I, swear. I have panic attacks. Bro, I can't deal with <laughs> bro you like me? I swear. Real I swear. No, bro, like like people think it's a joke. I'm not joking. No, like, if I'm, I, if I'm, I'm not joking. My palms sweat. Then be on me, like, bro, you just get on plane, but bro, I don't like. I don't even like going in Trust elevators. Me. Nobody is more bro, scared of flying see, put, than me. I put, I put the blanket over my head and I'll be shivering like. <laughs> Ask anybody who knows me. The one thing I, I hate the most is flying, bro. And I have to do it so much. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so, bro, do you feel like um? You've been overlooked a bit. Because I, I feel you have. Uh, but sometimes I see things like, you know, like tweets like UG's underrated and this, this, that. But for me, it's, it's, if that's the case, it means I've got more work to do. I don't see it as like a, a demotivating thing. I just mm -hmm. feel like if that's the case, it's, it's more motivating for me. I feel like I've got to do more and got to make more noise. So sometimes it can be hard because like you can spend so much time putting effort into something you put money into it um and it just it doesn't get received the way you think it'll get received but i don't think it's something that will dishearten me some, this is what i want to do this is my mm -hmm. life like this is what i've chosen to do so you can't be underrated forever um and it's always also about timing i was I, I i believe in that very much when it's not your time you can't go for something that's not yours you can try everything you want to try you can knock every door down but if it's not for you and it's not your time it ain't gonna bang bro mm -hmm. so for me that's one thing i know and i I have in the back of my mind. So it's just about playing the game right and just positioning myself well, man. But I wouldn't say 
overlooked cool but in due time but I'll I mean I, <coughs> again maybe <I'm, coughs> excuse me I may be using the wrong no, you're wording right. yeah. but it's like and this is this is this is honest thing. Yeah. I think people still don't fu- they don't fully understand maybe the easy sound. Yeah. I mean so the UG yeah. sound like yeah. because it's you've given us bangers yeah. but it's just like like for example like Berry yeah. because he's the producer mm-hmm. and cuz he's like that's Berry. Yeah. But with yours bro it could be a beat over here it yeah. could be this over here you know, even low low eat, like every- people always tell to me you see when you can do more than one thing it's actually, they say it's a blessing and it's a curse. Because I don't just sing, because I rap as well, and I can produce. Are you producing? Them? Yeah, bro. So it's like, I didn't know that, even when with my label, it's like, yo, well, how are we putting you out to people? Because we can't put you out singing and rapping. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? So it's like, you got to choose one thing you got to do first, and then blah, blah, blah. Bro, I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Like, this is, I can, like, <laughs> I don't know. Do you know, it's, 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 a, it's a weird one, because it's like, like, I was sitting there saying to myself, it's not about sounds because yeah. sounds die out. Yeah. But UG talented, mm. but it's like, I don't think people fully correlate or hold on to not yet. One, one thing. Not yet. But not internally, yet. like, that must be a challenge for you now. Yeah, you, you have to see yourself as a product. Of course. So that's, I mean, that's why I even went quiet for so long recently. I had to go back to the drawing board and I wouldn't say find a sound, but just find, find like a flavor or like a vibe that I feel like I could be consistent with that people can actually listen to and be like, you know what, this is what, this is the UG I like and this is what we're going for. So this is why I think Lolo was a good start. Um, you know, it's like mixing the African slang with like English slang and a bit of even the Jama- the Patois slang. Because yeah. whether we like to admit it or not, Afro beats and dancehall go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. They cross over so much, we, we don't even see the, the lines anymore. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to go for. The vibe like Lolo, it's me- melodic, but like rapping. It's like a little bit melodic, melodically rapping over, mm-hmm. over beats, man. We're still, we're still getting there. Lolo, when it came out, yes, bro. Like, what were you looking for to know, like, if it's been received how you want it to be received? Um, firstly, you see a lot of people posting it on their Insta stories and Snapchat. Mm-hmm. The females, because my songs are generally for like females. Um, so your IG post, <laughs> <No. laughs> bro? What are you trying it? No way, no, no. ain't that bad. Man, this guy is in on a regular. No, no. What is this? Bro, him and his what brothers, they be smiling. Nah, nah, nah. Go on lockdown, bro. <laughs> hey, man, after you finish, we got to put him on a picture. Get me. But yeah, that's no, it, bro. Yeah, um. Lolo was, it was the posting, like people tagging you and posting it. Mm-hmm. I think if girls put it on their Snapchat, that's where songs start blowing. You know, when they're getting ready and doing mm-hmm. their makeup, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, and the song's playing in the background and they're posting and they're tagging you. That's always a good start. Another thing is when the dancers start doing their challenges. Um, Shout out to Chop Daily, man. Yeah, boy. That's off, my yeah. family. Big up Chop on. Daily forever. Um, and streams, of mm. course. Like the views online and also the audio streams. Generally, you should get loads of buzz coming from loads of different places. I have a lot of good people around me that are very honest with me about my music, bro. Mm. So there's like 10 people I send my music to. Mm. It's either if they don't call me back or they don't, Harass my WhatsApp, I know the song's not a banger. So I, I put my, my songs through gruesome, gruesome, gruesome tests. And for it to make it to the stage of it coming out, I know it must be decent enough. Mm. But again, as you're saying, it's whether the people are going to receive it. Um, so that's why I think it's very important like, how you market things and, and how, you, how you do things like that, man. Yeah, I think my, like, that's the most the, important thing, bro. Bro, it's this thing like, you know, like Barry and I used to talk about, it's like, yeah. you know, because I think. I know you and Barry are close, Barry close. close. Yeah. I, mean, I think you told me that like, you recorded. Did you say you recorded? He recorded Dance For Me. That's it. He brought his studio tell, tell, us, tell, us, tell us that story, man. So, boom. Uh, <laughs> big up Team Salute. They actually sent the beat to Easy first. That song, that beat was for Easy. Mm-hmm. Easy heard it, he was a bit rocky about it. Mm-hmm. But when I heard it, I was like, yo, this beat is crazy. So I was like, give me the beat. Let me take it and I'll see what I can do. So we, we were there for like a week. And big up my boy Patrick, who's behind the camera. Them times I was just getting onto the central London scene and partying, so mm-hmm. meeting people like Crypto and Cohen and that. So bro, I was gassed. Mm-hmm. The energy was high. Got back in like six a.m. Mm-hmm. and I was like to my boy Patrick, I was like, "Yo, we need to we need to do something on this song." So bro, I don't know what happened. We were drunk. I literally started doing one two melodies on it, and I came up with the hook for "Dance with Me." And the minute I came up with it, bro, I was like, "This song is gone." Tried to call Easy at six a.m. He didn't wake up, so I sent him a voice note. And at the time, we didn't have a set studio. I didn't have my own studio equipment, nothing. 
the only person I knew that was serious and on point like that was Malik. Mm -hmm. So I called Malik and I was like, bro, oh, I think it was easy to call Malik. Like, we need you to come and help us record. Bro, he didn't complain. He brought his studio equipment. I'm talking about big, not even the mini monitors, mm -hmm. big monitors, a mic. He drove all the way from his to ours in East, like where we were staying in East London. And he set it up for us and he recorded. And I'm sure even some of the parts of it, he told us, oh, don't do too much of this, don't do too much of that. And he's never, ever bragged or never said, oh, I was the one that recorded it. He's always quiet about it. So if it wasn't for Malik, we probably wouldn't have even recorded that song. Nah, that's it, man. Like, always got to big him up, man. Yeah, man, you guys got a really, like, I like how you lot of relationship yeah, is, man. man. Um, he's my big bro, man. Yeah, man. I learned a lot from him. I learned a lot from him, man. Yeah, man, he's about to come back out again, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Come to shut down. Do you, where do you see as your target audience, is it? You're trying to crack UK, is it like, cause sometimes it's like, yeah, UK, or is it like yeah. America, or is yeah. it like Africa? Yeah. I would the, say- The music's traveling. Yeah, it's a some. lot, bro. Like when I look at my, my numbers and like the demographics, where they come from, even though UK is the biggest, like we've got like uh, France and Netherlands and Stockholm that are literally close to my UK numbers. So I always feel like when you're from a place, sometimes they don't always respect you straight mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to go outside and let the world know what's going on first and then somehow home catches up and blah, blah, blah. So the UK has always shown me love. There's never been a problem with that. But I, I wanted to concentrate on Europe more um, and kind of like if I could take Europe properly and be like the, the go-to guy in Europe, then take on the rest of the world after. So Europe it was, it was definitely my main focus first, mm -hmm. man. So. Um. The other thing I was going to say to you, bro, like, how has your family responded to, like, your success, man? That's crazy. I know my dad is, is, is breathing a sigh of relief because, you know, when we're growing up and then I told him this is what I wanted to do. As a pastor as well? Yeah, he's a pastor, bro. And <laughs> I was a straight-A student, like, so academically, that's what he wanted me to do, the academic side of things. Mm -hmm. um, but since I, I think I was, like, 12, 13, I knew this is what I wanted to do. So I always told him, like, yo, this is what I want to do. I was rapping since I was a kid and... He was like, look, as long as you finish university, like we can have, like we can, we can do this, and you'll have my support. So, bro, I did that. What did you do at uni? Uh, business of advertising, Harvard yeah. University. Look at this guy. Yeah, so. me. I got a two one. That's not bad. Two one. Yeah. So. Okay. I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. Everyone gets a two one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So about wasting the time. It's cool. Like, yeah. um, I did that, and then yeah, lo, like lo and behold, he, he stuck to his word. He's never ever told me don't do music. Because the problem is he's the one that got us into music when we were kids. Mm. So he's like, you give us this gift of their music and then you can't, like, he's not going to turn around and tell us don't use it. Mm -hmm. But obviously because he's a man of God, mm -hmm. don't lead people astray. Like, don't go and sing about bad mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can sing about love without having to talk about it in a very vulgar way. Do you mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? There's nice ways to talk about things um, without it, you know, causing problems. And I've got loads of little cousins loads of little cousins so and my aunties and uncles because they know that this is what I do a lot of people are looking at me so I try not to influence them negatively and like talk about things that they can't learn from or like badly but my dad's so supportive when I tell you like my first trip to Ghana back to Ghana should I say when we went to shoot the body video it was actually my dad and my younger brother that paid for my ticket to go serious yeah that's how much they believe so but see you're a grown man though yeah. You've lived life a bit, so I presume EP or album time. Yeah, bro. EP. You may have to shed your skin a little yeah. bit. Yeah, oh, don't worry, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. I mean? Oh, big boy's coming. But what I realised, bro, like their, their prayers yeah. are so important so in this, in this. Bro, I, I survive on my mom and dad's prayers, man. People don't really understand how deep no. it gets, bro. Like it's it, deep like that. Yeah, man. It's real like that. I'll be, I'll, I'll go anywhere and stand there and say that. If it wasn't for my mom and dad's prayers, I would not be here, bro. Cause I've been through some mad stuff in my life. Mm that showed me that, yo, like, it's not everything that, it's not everything, not everything's in my power. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? So there's things I've got, situations I've gotten out of, bro, I promise you, <laughs> only God and only prayers. So now, now that I'm here, mm -hmm. I know I have to be grateful for, for the prayers that they give me, man. Do you get what I'm saying? So what are we looking at next now? Obviously, we've got, no, no, we've had, you know, the reintroduction of um, UG. Yes, what, what, what are we looking at next, bro? So we've got a new single coming out with Wavy the Creator. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of her, but Wavy. Yes, she was DL, right? She's an alien, bro. Yeah, like yeah. Her sound is something else, her fashion. So um, we've got a new single called, I'm not even going to say the name. Mm -hmm. We shot that, the video is ready for that. So that's probably going to follow up Lolo probably in about two, three weeks time. Um, then we're going to, 
announced the UK tour, so I want to touch. Come on. Yeah, some of the the cities that I've never been to. I want this is my this is gonna be my first UK tour. Then I'm gonna do my first London headline show as well. So I feel like I haven't decided yet whether I'm gonna let the EP go first before doing the tour or do the tour then let the EP go. But I think the smart thing would be to let the EP go first, mm -hmm. then doing that. So touring definitely will come later this year as well. Got some festivals abroad, you know, um, Stockholm, Amsterdam, Paris. Um, and you're going to see more of me. So I feel like I've been hiding for a long time. People don't really know my face. They don't know my personality and stuff. So it's <laughs> you guys are trying to fool people that know his face. And I'm no, telling them no, this guy's always smizing. Yeah. Bro, I ain't smized enough yet, man. You know what I'm saying? I gotta smile some more. There's more smizing left in me, you know what I'm saying? Nah, but I got, I'm ready to come out my show and, and give them more, man. More energy, more vibes, bro. It's, it's, it's hearing you say that, yeah, yeah. I didn't see you as a, I didn't see you as, a, as an extrovert. Yeah. But I wouldn't take you as an introvert. As an intro, I know. Because yeah. it's like your music makes people dance. Yeah. You're out there, you're, yeah. you, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I, yeah. I never, what, what, what is it that, I won't say that holds you back, yeah. but what, what's the, what was the barrier? Um, I think it's, it's just not finding myself, but more just making sure I'm at peace inside first. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. there's loads and loads of things that I had going on and loads, bro, loads of little things. And where I'll do something decent and get to a certain point, I'd always come crashing back down because I've got stuff just going on that I need to deal with. There was loads of stuff, but we've I've cleared it all up. I've I feel like I'm I'm me now, like I'm myself, I'm peaceful inside, like and I know what I want, I know where I'm going. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think I think that's that's the main thing for me, man. Do you know how I how I how I perceived it, yeah? yeah. Is I remember because I was I was watching the old the old thing with Eddie yeah. before we did our thing, and I remember you said that as you just reiterated yeah. that when you was like twelve or thirteen, yeah. you knew you were gonna do music, right? Yeah. And then you did it, yeah. but I feel like it's almost like when you know when people say like, "Oh, I'm gonna have a fight with a boxer," yeah. like, and they say, "Yeah," but it's much different when you're on the inside. So I feel like the song you, you wanted it, yeah. the song came, and and you weren't ready, and the song went further than you. There you go. Then you had to try and catch up I with it. Learn. I've done so much learning, bro. Um, and again, big up Malik, big up Easy. Um, <clears throat> I've had to go and watch them, and watch how they do things because. You, you're not going to learn unless you have people like that around you that can show you and that motivate you and you see that they work, bro, they work hard and that kind of stuff motivates me. So where I was, I want to say I was hanging around with people that weren't doing anything but I needed to surround myself more with those kind of people, the, the people that are pushing, yeah, trying to do things. They've actually got to be more on it than I am to make sure that I'm really working. So I did that, took some time out, shadowed Malik a little bit, shadowed Easy a little bit and some other artists as well. And I just feel like now, I kind of understand the business. I didn't. I had no business knowledge, bro, of of music business anyway. None, like none. Like so many things I took for granted. There's so many things that I let slide. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, J Jules was saying that to me a while ago. It was like this is probably like the, around the time we we're gonna do the um, Afrobeats yeah. conversation. Yeah. I remember I messaged him. I told you before. I messaged him thinking yeah. it was you. Yeah. And he he carried on a pretense. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, wait, Jules, why are you talking to me? He's like, yeah. bro, because he's been in situations yeah. where people have taken advantage of him. And obviously, I, don't, I, have, no, mm -hmm. no, mm -hmm. I have no idea what mm -hmm. that was. Mm -hmm. I just thought, like, first of Jules, a real brother, yeah. to make sure he's making sure yeah. his boys all yeah. right. But I never knew. I was thinking, wait, easy, easy. Yo, I didn't even big up Jules. By the way, big up Jules every single day. That's another person I've learned from. And that's a real bro, so I've got time for Jules. Good heart, yeah, bro. Yeah, clean up. Good heart, I've got man. time for Jules. Yeah, man. And you and Jules got a great relationship yeah, as well, man. Bro, he introduced me in Easy, so. That's it, yeah. yeah. So. And I feel like Jules was somewhat in that space, maybe like two and a half, maybe two years yeah. ago, where he's like, he didn't know whether he's going to quit his job yeah. and yeah. go he, full he, in, he man. Was going through that. Yeah, man. But I, we, we all told him, I told him, I was like, bro, if you, the thing about life, yeah, is uh, you can't be 50 50 of anything, bro. Facts. And I feel like it's either God, if it's God you believe in, which I believe in, that's what I'll say, mm -hmm. if it's the universe, it's the universe. But, if you're not giving something your 100%, you are not going to get 100% out of it, bro. That's, that's just life. You're not going to. So you can't be one foot in and one foot out. So I've always, I have always say to people, you have to like, not so go broke. Is, is your mic still on? Oh, crap. Yeah. Was, oh, crap. Did you just fall down this now? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. cool. Yeah, so, like, you have to be broken down to like nothing, I feel like. Mm -hmm so that you can build things back up properly. So that's, that's how I see it. 
you have to take it back down to ground zero and, and, and just look at what it is that you're supposed to be doing and then work your way back up. But if you think you can go and do something, there's no job in this world you can go into and give it 50% effort and you're going to get promoted. It doesn't work like that, bro. You, Especially in music. Bro, it ain't going to work like that. So you have to go hard mm -hmm. and go hard for real. Like genuinely where inside of yourself you know you're doing the work you're supposed to be doing. Otherwise, it ain't going to happen. Yeah, and kind of like, because I know I'll, I could go in, but I need to wait for this EP. Yeah. I need to wait for this EP. Yeah. But, so, be open, open, open with me. Yeah. What was the reason why you decided to go with DL? Um, well, big up Dummy. Dummy is a cool guy that I've met before, obviously signing to them, and he's always been like a big bro to me. So, when it got down to, like, signing, there's, obviously, there's a couple other people that I was really close with. Um, but at the time, for my situation, I like what they had done with uh, Bane, or what they are still doing with Bane, um, and Youngin. Um, I've seen mm -hmm. how they raised their profile, they, sh they, they sharpened their image and things mm -hmm. like that. So, where I can't concentrate on everything like that, their style and their way they do things is kind of suited what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it was like a no-brainer to go there. It's like a family when I go there anyway, so it made sense for me to go there. And also, it's like, I think, one thing about Dummy, yeah. G, mm -hmm. like just as my masterminds. Yeah, very, very masterminds. And the fact it's a, it's a black business. Yeah, bro. You know, you so it, just on any go. level, it's just there aspirational. You go. I didn't want to say it, but that's the main thing. Is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's black, man. Black and people. culturally, they understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Bro, so. so big ups to them, man. Yeah, man. So lastly, bro, like, yeah. what's, the, what's the worst to the UG fans, bro? Or the worst? What's the words? What's the oh, words? words? Words, yeah. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys for supporting me thus far. Um, thank you for being patient. Um, UG has found himself again. So he's coming back soon. Uh, please just keep supporting, keep sharing the music. Um, and we're going to take this all the way to the top, man.